Hello YouTube. This is Jill and this is my mischief, basically my tutorial introduction to the program. Um, this is pretty much the only thing that I used to draw. I used to prefer using Oakaki to draw with, but nobody really uses that anymore. I mean there's a couple, but nobody really does it. Um, I don't feel comfortable drawing in Photoshop. I just do like graphics editing, photo editing, that kind of a thing. I feel more comfortable in Photoshop, but for something that's with drawing, I prefer something a little more clean and easy to use. Um, I mean, Photoshop is fine for adding effects and stuff to your artwork after you're done, but in a way, to me, I kind of prefer to challenge myself to figure out how to create the colors and effects actually doing it versus just using like some kind of a filter layer kind of a thing over the artwork so that's what I prefer to do I mean you could do whatever you want but this is going to show you a little bit about mischief um, this is the most uh, up-to-date version of the program and something that you may or may not know sorry if you go into your settings and you go to your it's going to be in your control panel, hardware and sound, go to your tablet properties. You can actually change your tablet buttons. I don't know if you know this or not. And in Mischief, there's a list of all your shortcut buttons and stuff like that. And then you can, like here I have where it says application, there's Mischief. And then I have just some of my buttons hotkeyed to the Mischief hotkeys. And um, you can kind of see here what your chip jabs are going to do. Set it up however you feel comfortable. So these are all the shortcuts that's under help um, shortcut keys right there. And then under file you have your basic kind of stuff like save and whatever whatever's. Uh, something you can do in Mischief is that you can import an image. We'll choose this picture of Tristan Risk right here and say I wanted to use this for whatever reason whether you want to import something just to get like a texture in your drawing or I mean if you did want to trace an element out of something you could do it this way by importing an image also in file you have export image and what this is going to do is you can either if you have an area selected you could use selection um, pins, I'll get into that in a little bit, but you can pick basically what part of the drawing you want to export as an actual image file. Um, with Mischief it has infinite zoom which means you can zoom in and zoom out for forever because it saves in vector format. So I usually just pick the visible canvas, I pretty much line up whatever I would like to save as the image file and then you can actually choose the pixel size or the inches that you want. This is really useful for doing prints and stuff like that. And then you can change your resolution to whatever you want it to be. Um, if you have the paid version of the file, you can, uh, or the paid version of Mischief, you can save as a PSD file, which would be the Photoshop and it'll save all the layers and everything like that which would help for um, if you're trying to like touch up something add different effects and stuff like that through Photoshop so that's how you would basically um, what they call export your image if you save it as just normal save it's gonna save it in the mischief format which is gonna um, preserve all of the vector elements of the um, image file okay and then if you go into your edit, you have um, pretty much basic stuff. This is just going to show you what you did so far. Um, flip canvas, pretty basic here. The only things that they really have to edit, they have transform and mischief. So I can like select something, transform it, so that'll let me be able to edit whatever I have selected or you can like resize it do whatever you want um, you can rotate it or say if I wanted to copy if I wanted it like to have duplicate of something for whatever reason that kind of a thing um, layers is pretty basic if you know how to work in layers 
Um, and then window, this is another way if you're interested in um, tracing something. I'm gonna close out of this real quick. Um, you can activate your window opacity or opacity, however you want to pronounce it. You can also do it with the shortcut button over here. You can change how opaque your window is. So then you can do this and then pick up your pen, kind of trace over whatever is behind it. So you can do that. And then speaking about the paid version of Mischief, you can actually download a free version of the program. It still has the um, basic stuff that you would want to do in it. You can only export as PNG and JPEG though can't export as the PSD like it says down here the free version does not have all of these different features in it you can't do your custom color swatches um, you don't have layers so that's pretty important and then the pins which like I said I'll show you how to do that okay so I have a pretty small monitor size so I usually keep all of my tools pretty small you can pick which ones you want showing here you make them bigger and it'll show all the different things that you can do in the different windows. Ugh, there we go. Okay, so for your colors you have your basic color selection. It's the square, not the uh, triangle. You can kind of pick your colors here. You can put it in manually here. Um, these are some custom color swatches I had from something else I was working on. So if you want to save a color you just pick it and then just drag it into a square wherever you want to put it. You can delete your color swatches too. Make new ones, delete them, do whatever you want to do. Um, down here you have your brushes and your erasers. There's a bunch of presets down here and then there's also presets up here. So you can actually um, like customize whatever you want to do. And then I can't remember how to make it save it. There's a way to save it onto here. Sorry about that. I guess there's not. I just paused it and tried to figure it out, but I guess not. I could have sworn I remember there was a way to save um, custom brushes up here on these um, top six slots. But anyway, so you have your most commonly used brushes here, and then you have some extra presets down here, and then obviously you can change them however you want and then you have your erasers here and then when you make the window smaller you can still pick the six top ones and then you can still adjust the pixel size and the opacity of it there <laughs> on your layers window you have your different layers you can make some of them invisible do whatever you want with that um, change the opacity on different layers you can choose a custom paper. The only thing that's disappointing about this is that the papers with fun textures on them, the textures do not translate into the artwork that you put on top of it, so that's the only thing that's kind of a bummer there. Um, your pins is actually kind of a neat feature. Um, say you want to zoom in or out. Say this is my whole image. You can put a pin here. There's a pin, so then you can kind of, if you want to save a certain spot, like, say I'm working on her face, I want to be able to quickly reference back to that. I can go back to my full image, switch back to her face, so this is actually also useful for saving your screen size, whatever you want to save for your export image file, so you can use it for that, do whatever you want to do. You can kind of sift through them, do whatever you want with your pins. So that's pretty useful. Um, also in your layers um, tab you have this stuff which is kind of like this except for just layers. So you can make just one layer bigger or smaller. So it's pretty much like the zoom except only on one layer. Which like I said it's all in vector so it's not going to be pixelated no matter how big you make it. You can move an individual layer around, which is the same as this one, except it's just moving an individual layer. This is your rotate, so you can rotate a layer. 
You can also rotate the whole image. Can be useful for people who like to rotate their paper when you're drawing certain shapes or lines in a different direction. You can rotate it easily that way. You got your merge button here. You can erase a layer. You can delete a layer. And over here you can switch to your pen, your eraser, or your dropper. This is going to be your shape. So, <laughs> I have my eraser selected. So, yeah, you can kind of do whatever you want with that. And like I said, they're all vectors. Your selection. Select whatever you want, and then like I said, if you want to change, then you would go to your transform selection. If you want to change something in that selection, or you can just do select and then do export and then export the selection. And then like I said here, this is your window opacity. Hey, Resident Evil. Okay. So, like I said, I usually make everything smaller. And then I'm going to show you how I normally do my drawings in here. No, no changes. Okay, I'm using a photo reference because normally I don't, but I just thought it would be a lot easier to work off of a reference so you guys wouldn't have to just watch me erase crap over and over again because that would be pretty boring. <laughs> I'm gonna pick a color. This red is nice to do that. Mm. Get my line how I want it to be. It's pretty good, I guess. Okay. Okay, so depending on what I'm doing, um, actually if I'm doing something that is like a photocopy, like where you're doing realism based off of a photo reference, I would prefer not to have colored lines underneath it because it can just make it more difficult to color afterward. I think it's easier to just start out with just a black line, especially since a lot of the time the places where you're putting lines around there's going to be a shadow there anyway, so then that can just naturally go into the black. But for something like what I'm doing right now, which is going to be more illustrative, I would use a color line. Okay, so... This is another reason why I don't like using photo references because sometimes I can get too hung up on making it look like the photo reference, which is a bummer. I think if you just draw naturally, sometimes your artwork can have a better flow to it and be more expressive. Oh.
So what I like to do is once I kind of know where I want my drawing to end, I usually put a rectangle around it just so I know where my screen space is going to be for when I export it later kind of a thing. So I usually put that on a new layer. Oops, that is not what I wanted to do. Okay. So I think it's just going to be focused on her face here. That's good. Maybe even this. Hmm. Yeah, I guess not. Do it. Oh, I forgot what size the brush was at. Change some aspects of it. I do want this to be a drawing of Heather again. I mean, I know I draw her a lot, but whatever. So. I think I made the nose too long, did I? Probably fine. Heather has to be around with me. Okay, and then the
Okay. Now that I have the basic sketch from the photo reference, um, since Heather's hair is parted on the other side, and your true self what as well. I'm going to do? Which way do I want and this build way? An eternal paradise. Just kind of flip it. And over. Okay. And then make my adjustments to make it look more Heather. a little bit of ear poking out probably Things kind of come from a higher place up here a little bit. I'm almost afraid that this hair looks too orderly for Heather. Oh well, I'll just roll with it. Almost looks very <laughs> like 90s, actually. A little bit of a Rachel going on here. Just kind of add in her clothes here.
I also actually have a picture of Heather that I'm looking at right now to just to be able to reference exactly what her outfit looks like. Because I mean, obviously she's one of my favorite characters, but my memory is not perfect. Not at all. So. Okay, and now from here, um, I'm going to add some darker colors to some of the lines. This is kind of optional since this is an illustration and I don't plan to outline it anyway. So, you just kind of do your own drawing style with that. love that wrist right there, it's so cool. Another thing about mischief, though, when you do line art, is that it does have smoothing, so. That'll help correct your line. I can't remember where it's at. Oh, here, preferences. So you can change it how smooth you want it to be. I just keep it on smoothest. She has eyes that have seen too much. Actually, starting to look like her, so that's good. Okay. 
So, now what I like to do is make a new layer. And also change my paper. Uh, I'll do it off of an orange color. Maybe kind of orangey. And so that's kind of the tone of Silent Hill 3 is that everything has kind of a reddish orange. Okay. Mm. A little bit more red than that, maybe. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, I think we'll go with this color. And then what I like to do is put my opacity down. And this is how I make my palette. Um, okay. so. We'll pick like a, a skin tone for her. Um, she's kind of hand colored. Man. Uh, I think that's a pretty decent color, so we'll just color that there. Uh, maybe make that just a little bit, a little bit. Okay. So then we'll, oops. We will drop of this, and then put it here for our skin tone, and then she does have a pink lip. Uh, it's probably the base color, so I'll do that. And then put that there. Um, Hair obviously is a yellow blonde kind of a color. Like that. Try that down for us. Here, I'll put that over here so I don't get confused. It's pretty close to her skin tone actually. Might just go ahead and make that a Color well. Uh, oh. Too saturated. Okay. Take that color. Still looks pretty similar, doesn't it? Hmm. Shite. Well, I guess it is what it is. They're just gonna be close together, I guess. She has brown eyes. And also some brown in her hair. Okay. I'll just pull that for both of those. And pull a darker color too. Just in case we need something like that. And what else we got? We got an orange top. That's about the color it is. Pull that. And she has a white thing on. Sort of an off-white color to start with. Okay. And drop that. See, so you can see that the colors that you end up with are not going to be exactly the colors that you have in the end, and that kind of gives your color more depth um, when you're working, so it ends up looking a little bit better. Um, okay, so I think that's everything. Okay. Uh, don't show this message again. <laughs> Woo! Of like 16 gigs of RAM and that shit keeps popping up. 
I don't understand it. I guess it must be because I'm recording. Not sure. Okay, so let's start with this color. And then we got our opacity. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. Mm. Yeah. With that brush, it looks pretty good. The other thing about this is see how you can change that. You can make your tips like so it'll have a greater range or less of a range of the size that you want your brush to have. So that's kind of cool. So we'll go with that. Um, so this is the skin color. So for the areas where the light is not hitting, so you need to pick where you want your light source to be. Um, I'm going to say the light is coming from here. Um, hmm. I don't know. Actually, I think it would be better if the light was coming from this side of her face. Maybe the front of her coming at her from this angle. So this side would be the part that would be lit up the most. I think that would be more effective. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting our color in. And I like to be rough with it. And just kind of throw it on there and start over. So then, like I said, the parts with the most light, you'd put most on it. Right there. Just a bit more light there. Right there. Maybe a little bit more light there. Sloping down like that, wouldn't it? Of course. Of course, my horse. Okay, so then we'll put a little bit on this side of her pinky here. Kind of. Okay, so that's gonna be where the light is for her skin, so we'll do her lips. Might want a smaller brush for that. And actually, I think what I'm gonna do now that I have my palette is maybe make my paper a little bit darker. You know what, maybe not. <laughs> Doesn't look like it makes it look better. Okay. Uh, so we need white for the eyes. And do white for this vest over here. Casting a shadow there, I think. Probably casting a shadow all the way back, actually. But do a couple of interest points there. Uh, orange for her shirt. Put a little bit of orange. And I think I'm gonna go back over the skin a little bit. And a little bit more into it. And then her hair is this color. So. Okay. 
Can I do this layer underneath the lines? Just so that the lines can actually stay for this step of it. Some brown in there. Especially up at the top, she has brown roots, so there's that. And this is also the eye color. Remember. Okay. Yes, the eyebrow color as well. And we'll just go ahead and throw this on as a shadow color. Just a little bit. You can kind of decide how you want to do your shadows, if you want to just use the straight paper color for your shadows, or if you want to add another color for that. So right here I'm just using a little bit of this brown color to kind of add more interest to the palette, more dimension and whatnot. Um, and then I think I'm actually going to add some blue. I want to do that on top of the lines. I want a desaturated blue. Darker. Pull that up. Oop. That up. Now we'll put that in some of the darker areas. And I think that will just add more color depth. And then I'll show you once I start blending the colors together, I kind of pretty much just use the color picker and just pull up colors from wherever. I feel like I want to use them from and then just kind of like plop them down everywhere, so. So that's what I kind of do with that. So here. Okay. And obviously skin tones naturally have those greens and blues in them anyway, so that'll be fine. Okay. So, that's gonna be my initial colors that I'm laying down. Um, I think I might add a couple of highlights as well, actually. So, I'm gonna actually use a blue highlight. Let me just, I just pull color. It's a nice color, actually, I like that. Just pull this straight off the paper and use that as a highlight. On top of my lines, of course. Okay. I think this is just going to add more contrast and separate the different areas of the drawing a little bit more. And I can obviously develop this even further once I start blending my colors together. So, I mean, you can already see from just the stage that I'm at right now that it's going to be an interesting drawing. So, okay, so now. 
what I do is I make another layer and then on this layer what we're gonna do is just start blending our colors out and the way that I do that is um, basically just use my eyedropper and my pen so I'll pick like a good uh, pen that I want to use or brush whatever you want to call it um, I don't know, this one seems okay. You kind of want something with a little bit of a high opacity. Um, unless you're trying to really, really blend it super soft. Um, but I kind of like a brushy look, actually. I think it looks more interesting, more texture to it and whatnot. So, then we'll just start pulling our colors. Um, I don't know if I want to do the background. Ugh. Decisions. Yeah, I think I do want to put background on this. Let me step back a second. I want to start putting a background behind her because I kind of want that frame around her face right now. And that's going to be a red color. Turn it down a bit. Jacket. Let me pull these colors into my palette so I don't lose them forever. And then I'm just going to go ahead and erase this stuff off of here. Uh, let's see, there's that stuff on. Okay. Where's the white? Is this the white? I actually kind of want to just use like a pattern a little bit. I don't know how many Silent Hill fans are watching this, but I kind of just want to do like a rough idea where it just kind of looks like maybe it's like the tiles in the background. Okay. Uh, just kind of. I can see where that would go. Hmm. And then let me get another dark red in there again. My screen space is so small. Okay. And then actually, I kind of want to just drop it in some of the actual background color. That looks 
pretty good. Pretty good. And we're just going to uh, go ahead and start our blending, like I was talking about a minute ago. Uh, I just ended. Okay. So let's get a good size brush. A bit of ethnicity. Stop undoing! I just changed my freaking hotkeys on my tablet, so it keeps. Confusing me. <laughs> oh, okay. okay, and I'm going to zoom in. I actually don't want it to be that high of an opacity. And then you can just kind of keep dropping your colors and kind of blending them out into one another. And I like to just play the colors as they lie kind of a thing. Actually, you know what? Hold on. I'm gonna change my... Okay, so super. I just had to change it back because that was just throwing me off way too much. I know there are other people who use this method, so I know it's not like revolutionary or anything like that. But forgiven their sins, when the paradise we have long dreamed for will arrive, after the judgment and atonement, an eternity of bliss. Oh, Alessa, the world you wanted is nearly here. I wish only for the salvation of mankind. But for that to happen, the world must first be remade.
Sometimes I might pull the color from another spot if I think it'll look good. So, can you do that a little bit? Blend it in together. Ugh, I just don't want her lips to end up looking too Kardashian. If you know what I mean. I mean, Heather does have like pretty full lips, but I just don't want them to look too crazy. This is a very much of which I can notice. I mean, now that she has a bad nose, she has a great nose, obviously. kind of just incorporate some of the line work into it, some of the colored lines, and like just kind of soften them up a little bit.
Okay, for this ear, honestly, I don't really feel like doing the details of the ear, so I'm just gonna kinda fade it into this purple colored shadow we have happening back here, which I kinda like. Kinda why I say with the um, play the color where it lies rule, because sometimes you can end up with some interesting looking color combinations just because of the colors that you can make. Um, so you end up with some stuff that looks like you planned it that way, but you actually didn't. <laughs> do that and it comes out looking pretty good sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't, but you can always pull colors from other places and add things to it and do whatever you want. So. I like in going in this direction with it.
can see the mistake I made here was not playing the colors where they lie. That's why it looks kind of disjointed and doesn't really match everything else. Kind of whitewashed over the whole thing. Took away the character of that area. For the hair, you kind of end up kind of blending back and forth a little bit to get it to have a slightly strandsy look, but you don't want it to look too strandsy because then it'll look like horse's hair or something like that. So.
Yeah, and this is why I like to have the colored lines with the um, illustrations because that bright red ends up having a really cool effect if you use it in the play a color where it lies rule. You end up with some interesting color combinations. Okay, so <clears throat> now we've got all of that done and we can start just kind of making sure everything looks how I want it to look and start working on blending her into the background a little bit since I decided I wanted to put kind of a background on this one so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And uh, after that we'll be pretty much done. Oh. I just want the background to look kind of soft and maybe just like kind of out of focus, like not really very clear anyway, so. Okay, so there we go. Anyway, so that's that, and um, hope you guys enjoy watching, and I hope it helps you out. Thanks. Bye.